గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ఎవ్రీవన్ శ్రీ ప్రసన్న కుమార్ గారు ప్రొఫెసర్ గోవర్ధన్ డాక్టర్ రాజారామ్ ఆల్ ద మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద హైదరాబాద్ చాప్టర్ ఆఫ్ సిఎస్ఐ రిప్రజెంటేటివ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ డిఫరెంట్ కాలేజెస్ అకాడమిక్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్స్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ మై కాంగ్రాచులేషన్స్ టు ద హైదరాబాద్ చాప్టర్ ఆఫ్ సిఎస్ఐ ఇన్ఫ్యాక్ట్ as the logo says this institution was founded here in hyderabad in 1965 and uh, i guess next year you will complete uh, 60 years 2025 you will complete 60 years so it's a very strong institution and has been taking up lots of programs to popularize computers computer sciences amongst the students amongst corporates amongst the innovators so i'm very happy that i have been invited to interact with all of you this is also a very appropriate time to really strengthen the digital movement in our country in fact in many corporate events i have spoken about it that the current times that we are in this is the new y2k uh, uh, stage many of you will remember that in uh, 1998 1999 there was some kind of a scare globally that our computer systems will not be able to transition from uh, the 90s to 2000s and that will lead to a major disruption in lots of uh, banking services financial services ticketing and so on and so forth and many of you may not particularly the students will not know this but that was the time when uh, some of our home grown it companies they actually took this challenge they approached all the fortune 500 companies and other organizations to tell them that they can tackle this crisis and as we know nothing untoward happened by 31st december 1999 everything was in place and therefore when the clock turned to 1st january 2000 everything transitioned very efficiently very smoothly and that was the time when the prowess of indian uh, tech industry tech capabilities tech resources that got established and since then we have come a long way today we know that uh, hyderabad for example is the home to some of the biggest technology companies there are other indian cities also like bangalore like pune gurgaon chennai etc where there is a huge uh, technology presence Engine engineers of indian origin are today working in uh, global uh, context and they are uh, responsible for some of the biggest technology breakthroughs that they are that are coming from some of these large corporations, R&D institutions. So definitely in the last uh, two decades or so, the technology landscape in India has really flourished, has really blossomed. And this scenario that we are in current, currently, as I said, in my opinion, it is another Y2K opportunity. Because of the fact that uh, this uh, pandemic which struck us almost uh, three years ago, of course, it has created lots of damages, lots of lives have been lost, people have uh, seen tragedies unfolding before them. But one positive thing that has happened is that it has given a very big push towards digitalization. Earlier, only large companies, Fortune 500 companies used to have IT budgets, IT uh, priorities and a de de dedicated IT division, etc. But now today, even uh, small companies, mid-scale companies, even a five-member company, ten-member company, they are realizing that if you don't really digitalize, you are going to perish, you are going to be left behind. And that digitalization push is happening at an amazing pace. And uh, what I meant when I said that this is again an opportunity for India to seize, like the Y2K movement is, that given the two, two decades of track record of delivering good quality products, good quality services, India can become the front runner in getting as much of that digitalization work as possible to our country, to our companies, to our people. And already it is happening. Of course, pa pandemic is behind us now. And I'm noticing this. In fact, uh, many of you who read about us, our activities in the government will know this, that literally no single week passes that a new company does not come to Hyderabad or an existing company does not announce its expansion in Hyderabad. The going is terrific for us and I'm expecting this to go on and on and on and this momentum is going to grow more and more. And if you ask these companies, why is it that they are coming to Hyderabad and India and not elsewhere? 
one of the biggest reasons they speak about is the talent which is available. And uh, I would really like to acknowledge it that this development of talent, this high caliber of talent, it has not happened overnight. It is because of institutions like the CSI, it is because of colleges and universities like our JNTU and all of you that over a period of time, the capability of bringing, attracting the best students after their, uh, let us say, schooling, molding them over the next four years, five years, giving them the latest technology know-how, giving them immersive practical experience and uh, helping them connect with the overall technology landscape, the ecosystem in, that has, in our city, that has really helped. So it is uh, an effort of decades by all of us put together that has today given such a strong advantage to our city and our country. So once again, I congratulate, I know that about uh, 17 uh, colleges and industry leaders are receiving awards today. My congratulations to all of them. And I do hope that whatever they have done, which has fetched them this award, they will continue to do more of it. And also what they have done will become an example for others also to replicate and to emulate. I would also make a couple of suggestions to the CSI chapter of Hyderabad. One is, of course, to continue to encourage uh, colleges and students and do more and more events. The other uh, important thing is that many other important developments have happened in Hyderabad in the last few years. This institution, I mean, it's a very great idea to host your event in T-Hub. T-Hub itself today is an amazing institution which promotes technology entrepreneurship. So can you create a bridge between the colleges and this institution? If, an, if a student or a group of students or a team of students is working on some technology project, can we push uh, them to strive like slightly more, convert it into a business plan, convert it into an entrepreneurial idea, and this institution will support them. So how do you help the students? go a level ahead or two levels ahead in their entrepreneurial journey. The other very important thing is, and uh, uh, I speak about this point with a little bit of concern. See, we have uh, great institutions in uh, a city like Hyderabad and to some extent in, uh, so just as a coincidence, I was in Mahbub Nagar in the morning and I'm coming straight from uh, Mahbub Nagar for this function. And, uh, uh, we have started an IT center in Mahbub Nagar, where uh, eight companies today have decided to take uh, seats and start their IT activities. And I was talking to them about what kind of talent is available. So they did point out that there is one college which is established in 97. Most of us are recruiting from that college. But what I understood was some of these companies told me that the students still need to learn much more. They need to be polished much more. Even their finishing skills are not as good as some of those companies have offices in Hyderabad also. So they were comparing the workforce of Hyderabad and the workforce whom they are recruiting in Mahbub Nagar. So obviously, you can't have 100% the same standard. But again, it should not be a big gap between a big city like Hyderabad and a smaller town or a tier 2 town like uh, Mahbub Nagar. So can CSI take this responsibility? Because I'm very sure and also because of the work from home and uh, these kind of new trends, companies will not mind, even if they have a small facility in Nizamabad or Warangal or Karimnagar, they will not mind as long as people of uh, skills are available. So how do you promote uh, better quality uh, skill development in tier two towns? And the only answer is more and more and more faculty development programs. These colleges are there. We can't do anything about those colleges. The college that I'm speaking about was established in 97. So it's already there for more than uh, two decades. It will remain like that. But whoever are employed in that college, whoever are the faculty in that college, can we work with them? Can we conduct lots of fac faculty development programs? Can we give them teaching aids? Today, lots of teaching is also happening through presentations, through audiovisual material. Can we design these and pass it on to them? Whatever way in which we can support these colleges, the better it will be for uh, encouraging companies to set up their units in these smaller towns. So do join hands with us. We are very keen to, after talking to the Mahbub Nagar folks in the morning, this idea has been coming to me since then, that how do you improve the quality of teaching in uh, these institutions. So 
this is uh, a very important priority now for us. And if CSI takes it up as a responsibility along with us, we'll be very grateful. The last thing which I want to tell is that uh, I, uh, I know that uh, TASC, one of our government institutions, has been running this program. But it needs to be done at a bigger scale, which is seen. Most of you are from uh, engineering colleges. In engineering college, in the third year, a student, uh, a college project is done. Students are expected to do a project. How do you ensure that these projects are done with uh, seriousness? An actual problem is taken. Interdisciplinary approach in solving that problem is found, and uh, good quality reports are presented. And if possible. Some of those reports are actually pursued further. Maybe an academic paper is written, some actual project work is done, some industry maybe sponsors that research further. So how do you improve the quality and, and caliber of this uh, student's projects, which every student has to do? In fact, many of you may not uh, know this, but for almost uh, one and a half years plus, I was the officiating vice chancellor at JNTU. And uh, this was something which I would notice at that time also, that this projects are being taken just as a formality. I have to do this project, so I, sub I write something, I submit something, I'm given some 30, 40 marks, I pass, just one box is ticked, but nothing more than that. So we are wasting a big learning opportunity. Project has been introduced as a part of the course to learn something in practice, to design something, to think of an idea, to work towards a solution. So how do you do that in a structured way? Task, as I said, used to run a program for some years with the help of ISB called the Technology Entrepreneurship Program. But obviously, ISB faculty have limited uh, bandwidth, so they can't cater to thousands of students. They were targeting some 20, 30 colleges. But how do you do it in all the colleges in our state is again something which is a priority for us. And if CSI wants to collaborate and give some ideas on how to do that, I'll be very grateful. But once again, I'm uh, very pleased at the good work which has been done year after year by the Hyderabad chapter of the Computer Society of India and uh, hope to stay connected and do more and more activities together in years to come. Thank you very much.